Actually, the name itself, Fugazi, the fact that it's from Vietnam is not really that important. The reason that we liked the name was that we agree with the sentiment that of a fucked up situation. I think that's a, an apt description of the world we live in. Uh, furthermore, uh, the name is ambiguous enough. You know, ambiguous. Uh, it's enough that word. Uh, but actually, the name itself, Fugazi, the fact that it's from Vietnam is not really that important. The reason that we liked the name was that we agree with the sentiment that of a fucked up situation. I think that's a, an apt description of the world we live in. Uh, furthermore, uh, the name is ambiguous enough. You know, ambiguous. Uh, it's enough. That word is open enough to interpretation so that people don't get like this instant, convenient definition. It's not important what the name means, really. I mean. Ultimately, what's important is the band. Uh, names do not make bands. Bands make names. It's not. It's not something that we we that we you know we plan for that, that has like some formula or structure. It's just what we play, you know. And it doesn't. There's no. Um, there's no. There's no definite. You know, there's no definite message you want to get across. Perhaps. Of say, course, the message is the band. That is the message. Is that perhaps? Uh, self-awareness in, in people hearing Fugazi? I think that we feel that a band, we understand a band is simply a band. And the message, of course, every song has thousands of messages in it. You know, we have, when we write lyrics, you know, sometimes we have like feelings that we're trying to put across. Sometimes we're not trying to put across anything at all. And that's a feeling in itself. That is a message when you're trying to be completely 
uh, nonsensical. Your music has uh, become quite popular in discos along with, say, Bad Brains or Jingle to Lunch. Does that really surprise you? Well, it surprises me because I've never been to a disco uh, and never been to one where they played Fugazi. I don't, I mean, it's very different here than it is in America, so, you know. Well, over here, are you coming to terms with your acceptability of a mixed audience that these days punks and rich kids and skaters and hardcore fans all turn up for a Fugazi gig? Well, it's not that big of a deal for us because it's been like that in America all along, so. And America has always had a, particularly in Washington, D.C., I mean, they, they kind of, those kind of, again, those kind of categories just don't really apply in Washington, D.C. People are people, and, and, and uh, it's been so blurred in our area for so long that it almost seems stranger to come here and only have one kind of people show up. I'd rather appeal, appeal, you know, appeal to many different people because uh, I certainly don't consider myself one particular kind of person or anybody else in the band one particular kind of person. Uh, on this concert tour, I understand that you have complete control of the organization, that you're limiting the entry f to anywhere f to $8. Is there any specific conception behind that move? Yeah, we, we always feel that music should just be reasonably priced, you know. Are they off? Oh, okay. Um, we just feel like the music is something... They, we go see shows, we don't want to pay a lot of money to see them. So, seems like fair enough. In America, we try to play for no more than $5. Uh, I guess over here it's 8 or, you know, we try to go for as, as low a door price as, as is possible. Something that's reasonable. Um, part of that is because we think music should be affordable. There is such a thing as economic discrimination, I think. It's called high culture. <laughs> and, you know, I've seen other bands charging as much as $25 in America, $30, $50, just seems kind of ludicrous. And then you go in and they charge $30 for t-shirts, which is just bullshit, you know. Um, it sort of takes away from the impact for me, personally, of a band when you know, because when I pay $25 to see a band, they better fucking entertain the shit out of me. It better be good. It's like when you go to a restaurant, if you should pay that much money for food, you know it better be, be fucking good. So in the same light, by charging a reasonable door price, I, we feel like we're allowed to suck. We don't have to be perfect, because we're not a perfect band. We're not, a, we're not like a phenomenally talented, greatest band on earth. We're just a band. And uh, it's strange that so many people want to come see us. Um, but it doesn't mean that we're going to charge more for them to come see us. Uh, yeah, we are in control of our organization, but that's, again, that's part of our autonomy. We feel that we will take full responsibility for the band and its actions, but we also must have full control over that too. And we don't answer for things that other people have to say about us. Hey, AJZ, but I guess it will do, huh?
Yeah, I, Discord is a label. Um, the word hardcore is a category that we're not comfortable with. So uh, there's a lot of different, there's mo thousands of different definitions for that that word. So I think that the word was really meaningless. You know, we're an independent label, an alternative label, um, and may you know, and, and we definitely start out as a punk label, like in, the, in those roots, or whatever. Um, but I, as far as a hardcore label, I think that's a category that's rather. Uh, uh, confining that I'm not interested in, in being categorized as. The label started in 1980, December 1980 was our first release. Uh, the idea was to document a s certain community of musicians in Washington, D.C. And now as we uh, come close to December 1990, Discord is still a label that is documenting a community of musicians in Washington, D.C. Uh, we pretty much have su succeeded in what we set out to do, and uh, we'll continue to do it as long as that community exists. When the community stops, so does the label. Uh, we are a well-known label, which is interesting, but um, we're not particularly ambitious, and we don't want to be a major label or anything like that. We want to do what we set out to do, and we, like I said, we'll do that until we're done. Uh, I don't know what you mean by logo, but I'll take your... I don't know. You mean... Yeah. I mean more of the, the design, you know. The yeah. yeah. The design is a, as a recognizable feature. Uh, which you immediately see that's oh, Discord. Yeah, it's a, the yeah. little... Yeah. Yeah, just a little something we, we drew. <laughs> so what you're saying is, is Discord is really an artistic project uh, exclusively for Washington bands. Yeah, always has been. Yeah. I mean, it was formed purely to document the music that we've, that was important to us. Uh, and part of the hope in that was that other people in other areas would also document the music that was important to them. Uh, punk rock start, started out in America as a very regional, regional thing. And there was different cities and different styles of music and different sorts of dancing and, and so forth. Uh, so we, um, we just felt like we should document Washington, D.C., which we thought was rather important, because that's where we lived. And we, you know, we, there's a lot of reasons for doing this. Uh, one of the main ones is that we deal only with our friends. We don't have to rely on business contracts or anything like that. We don't use contracts. We don't, we don't like, you know, just make them sign anything. We don't take away the rights to their songs, nothing, you know. We just work with our friends, and we... Uh, it just works out to be a better a better situation for us because I, I have a lot of contempt for the record industry and I don't particularly want to be a part of it any more than I have to. Um, the fact that I, that we started our own label is uh, is proof of that. You know, when you don't want to be a part of something, you do it yourself. So we did. They they put your label in that category: hardcore, discord, punk bands. I don't really care what people think about the label or about the bands, or whatever. Uh, I just, I'm not going to be a part of, I'm not going to play a part of that and say, yes, we are this. We're not, you know, like, we, we're a label, and uh, I think that it's, you know, having played music for 10 years and been involved with hundreds of bands, when you have bands like Shudder to Think, Fidelity Jones, Soul Side, Holy Rollers, or Fugazi, I think there's enough of a variance there that a label, any category, is only limiting, in my opinion. And it's too convenient for people, particularly the media or the or j journalists, fanzine people, whatever, uh, it's too convenient for them to have those sort of uh, labels. It just, because they don't mean anything anymore. So we're just, I'm just, people are welcome to th call it what they want. I'm just not going to agree with them. I'm just going to say, well, yeah, we're Fugazi. Yeah, the label is Discord, and we'll leave it at that. Like, young people's vision of, of, of life and music, you know. I think it's a good a good thing. And I think that uh, even though we all are getting older, I think that that, that kind of the decisions that we made as teenagers or as youths or whatever were really, really important to where we are now today. And I always will support uh, the freedom of choice for kids, man. I think it's really important that kids have the alternatives and can know about it and go be a part of it if they want to go to the underground. I think the underground 
the underground has always been a breeding, like just a breeding area for true creativity where people can do what they want to do and not have to follow necessarily sets of rules. Although there are plenty of rules that can be sort of applied, such as categories, but we'll ignore that for now. Um, the underground does offer like a lot of potential and I hope that I always will support the underground. The specific question regarding Discord Records. Um, have you ever thought of using the label as a mouthpiece, for instance, for political for exposing political repression, uh, as you often sometimes find on other underground product? Uh, I would say that first off, that anything you do, particularly anything you do in part of an alternative community, is ipso facto a political statement and expression. Uh, that's not necessarily to be confused with politicians and necessarily politically, political groups. It merely means that to exist uh, independent of the mainstream is a political, it's a political feat, in my opinion. Uh, if you're familiar with the label, you would know that we did release the State of the Union album, which definitely was, uh, I'd say, rather explicitly, you know, had rather explicit uh, expressions from people about uh, the political situations in the world. Uh, we find that the creativity we leave to the bands, if the bands say something, then we will support them and what they have to say. Uh, the label itself, again, is only a vehicle for this stuff to be released. The, we, we, it's left to the bands to decide what they want to do, like, politically. Uh, Fugazi, for instance, plays many, many benefits. Like, in Washington, we haven't played a paying gig for over a year. Um, this is <coughs> partly to raise partly to raise consciousness, which is very important. <clears throat> More importantly, it's to raise uh, cash for groups that we think are important. And if you want an example of those groups, I can tell you uh, homelessness groups in Washington, which was a very big problem in America, people who have nowhere to live, shelters, women's shelters, children's shelters, <clears throat> uh, soup kitchens, free clinics, uh, AIDS activism, gay rights groups, environmental groups, women's rights groups, uh, prison rights groups, uh, prison reform uh, groups. We have These are things that we feel personally as individuals, as human beings, we think are very important. And being a member of a band gives us an opportunity to gather people and because of that, gather money. And with that money, we can put it towards people who are on the front lines of those causes, which, which we feel are important. Uh, I think a lot of times, the way we look at it, that expressions about certain political things, um, it, dates, it dates your music, whatever, and it dates your expression. And I think that <clears throat> rebellion uh, I think the power and the right to speak out is timeless and should not be dated. I don't want 1990 written on um, the words that I sing because that right to express myself is timeless. Big, big English fella. The yells, I think. Oh, 